Berwick-upon-Tweed and its castle were captured by the English in 1482 during the Anglo-Scottish Wars. By the Treaty of Fothering Hay, the 11th of June 1482, Alexander Stuart, Duke of Albany, the brother of James III of Scotland, declared himself King of Scotland and swore loyalty to Edward IV of England. The follow-up invasion of Scotland failed to install Albany on the throne. But the border town of Berwick-upon-Tweed has remained English ever since the castle surrendered on 24 August 1482. The English army left Edinburgh with a promise for the repayment of the dowry paid for the marriage of Princess Cecily of England to the Scottish Prince. Treaty of Fothering Hay Edward IV was disappointed by the failure of his 1474 treaty with James III who had promised that his son, Prince James would marry Cecily of York. The betrothal was made in October 1474 with a 45-year truce to last until 1519. Her dowry payments were to be made yearly on 3 February in Edinburgh, brought by Edward's servants from Norham Castle, and a meeting was to be held to resolve the dispute over the Fishgarth, a salmon trap on the Esk. Since February 1475, Edward's offices had delivered installments of Cecilia's 20,000 mark dowry to James's treasurer in St Giles, Edinburgh. However, border conflict had restarted in 1480, perhaps due to Scotland's old alliance with France. According to a chronicle, the Earl of Angus had attacked Bamborough Castle, and the Earl of Northumberland had raided in Scotland. By October 1480, James III had written to Louis XI of France asking for guns and artillerymen to repulse further attacks. Eleven ships were put on war footing for Scotland in February 1481 and Sir Robert Radcliffe was commanded to arm a fleet with guns and gunners on 8 July. These ships made raids in Forth, attacking Blackness Castle and harassing shipping in the spring and autumn of 1481. There does not seem to have a land-based invasion of Scotland, but there were three raids into England by a Scottish army in that year. Edward IV had made the invasion preparations and began to travel north, but went no further than Nottingham. In May 1482 James III's brother, Alexander, Duke of Albany landed in England at Southampton from France in a Scottish carvel, the Michael, captained by James Douglas. Edward IV seized this new opportunity to invade Scotland, hired Master Douglas and his ship on 9 May, and summoned fighting men for the cause of the King of Scotland on 10 May. Edward IV, Albany and Richard, Duke of Gloucester made a formal treaty at Fothering Hay Castle near Peterborough, where Mary Queen of Scots was imprisoned and executed a century later. According to the Fothering Hay Treaty, Alexander, if he became King of Scotland, would reserve to Edward IV the town of Berwick-upon-Tweed, Lochmaben Castle with land in southern Scotland in Annandale, Liddesdale, Eskdale and Usedale. He would do homage to Edward IV and break the old alliance with France. If he could extract himself from other engagements in the sight of the church, he would marry Princess Cecilia of England. He had already married Anne de Tour, the daughter of the Count of Oven and Bouillon in January. On the 11th of June 1482, Albany signed Alexander I for Alexander Rex. The invasion. Edward IV had been preparing an army of 20,000 men to invade Scotland by sea and land, and on 12 June 1482 Richard, Duke of Gloucester was made commander, with John Elrington appointed war treasurer on the 22nd of June. One of his officers, Francis Lovell, had his orders before the 24th of June 1482, as he wrote that he could not travel south from Tanfield near Durham for the feast of John the Baptist as he had a command in Gloucester's army. Equipped with 2,000 sheaves of arrows and ordnance brought from Newcastle upon Tyne by 120 cart horses, Gloucester and Albany recaptured Berwick. The town had been in Scottish hands for the previous 20 years after the Lancastrian fugitives Henry VI of England, 
and his wife Margaret of Anjou gave it to James, and was held by David Lindsay, Earl of Crawford and Andrew, Lord Grey. They surrendered by negotiation, although the castle held out for Scotland. Lord Abridge the English army moved west from Berwick and divided into two. The Earl of Northumberland stayed on the Scottish border taking castles and battle houses and burning farms at Kirkyethome, Bemerside, Moor Battle, Roxburgh, Jedburgh, Ednam and other places. Richard, Duke of Gloucester also moved west to Kim and came with the support of James, Earl of Douglas but near Duns turned northwest to Edinburgh. The Scottish army of James III got no further south than Lauder Bridge, to the west of Gloucester's route, where there was some kind of mutiny involving Archibald, Earl of Angus. The exact events at Lauder are unclear, but chronicles relate that some of the king's favourites including the architect Cochrane were hanged from the bridge. James III was brought back to Edinburgh on 22 July 1482. There were now three clear factions in Scotland, Albany's party, the Loyalists, and the Lord of Mutineers. The Queen at Stirling with Prince James may also have had independent influence. A London merchant, George Selly, wrote a letter with exaggerated news of the campaign in July. The Duke of Albany wise come in into England and he has sworn to King Guy's good grace. And the King has sent HYM into Scotland with 60,000 men YNIE battles and many lordies of England with HYM. With an and Monith there has been about 44 towners and villagers Brent and Scotland and many lordies taken and slain. Don Friswise wise Brent Richard, Duke of Gloucester at Edinburgh at the beginning of August Richard's army entered Edinburgh but he could not establish Albany as king. James III remained safe in Edinburgh Castle apparently as a prisoner of the lords who had mutinied at Lauder. Although he had secretly contracted with the keeper Lord Darnley and the garrison for his safety, Richard, not having expected to meet this goodly acute T.A.T., did not have resources to besiege the castle. As the details of the Fothering Hay Treaty became known, vital Scottish support for Albany as king evaporated. Albany, his brother's party, and the keepers of the castle became reconciled. On 2 August Albany and Gloucester signed a bond with Colin, Earl of Argyll, Archbishop Skevis, Lord Avondale, and the Bishop of Dunkeld which promised a pardon for Albany and the restoration of his previous dignities. The English army made a truce on 4 August 1482 and withdrew with an undertaking from the town of Edinburgh to repay an advance on Cecilia's dowry, which Edward had given to James III. The money had been paid as James III had previously promised his son Prince James would marry Cecilia. Albany was left to take possession of Edinburgh Castle and become for a time in his brother's keeper. Gloucester left 1,700 men to assault Berwick Castle on the 11th of August and the castle was captured after a fortnight's siege. Edward IV wrote to Pope Sixtus IV on 25 August describing the campaign in Scotland, explaining that Richard had spared all the citizens of Edinburgh, helped by the intercession of Albany, who was restored to his estates by the power of the English army. Edward explained that the taking of Berwick was the chief advantage he had gained. Berwick Castle, Edward writes, was taken on the army's return, not without slaughter and bloodshed. This letter was written before news of surrender of the castle could have reached him. According to the date 24 August given in the Chronicles of Raphael Holland's Head, John Leslie, and Edward Hall, Siege of Edinburgh Castle after Gloucester's departure, Albany seems from the Chronicle stories to have looked for supporters for his faction possibly including discussions with the Queen Margaret of Denmark at Stirling Castle, then besieged Edinburgh Castle. James III came out on 29 September, but Lord Darnley, who had joined James's party, held it in defence till 7 October. The historian Norman MacDougall supposed that James III came out of the castle after Albany made a deal with his half-uncles and rebels at Lauder. John Stuart, Earl of Athol and James Stuart, Earl of Buchan. The letter exonerated the garrison from any censure. 
Dunley, James III wrote, had made a compact with him for his safety, and held the castle against Albany's siege on James's orders. After math for some months Albany remained powerful in Scotland, and on the 11th of December 1482, James III made him Lieutenant General of the Realm to defend the borders from English raids. When James III was restored to power, on 8 January 1483 he rewarded the provost of Edinburgh Walter Bertrahammer, who had underwritten the bond to repay Cecilia's dowry while the king was captive and warded in Edinburgh Castle, with a pension of £40. He also paid bills from July for minting an unpopular base metal copper, black money, coinage and £214 for iron used for making serpentines and other guns, and arranged for the repayment of money seized from George Robertson, the customs officer of Edinburgh, at Lauder. Albany went to Dunbar Castle and renewed his treaty with Edward IV in February 1483. The new treaty was made at Westminster by Henry Earl of Northumberland, John Lord Scrope and William Parr with the Earl of Angus, Andrew Lord Grey and James Liddale of Halkeston. This had the unintended effect of strengthening home support for his elder brother. Albany was forfeited as a traitor by the Parliament of Scotland in June 1483 for making this new treaty, not for the events of the previous summer. After a period of exile, joined with the Earl of Douglas, his next attempt in Scotland was defeated at the Battle of Lochmaben Fair.